Good day, everybody. This is Mike Dangeen from Hammond Power Solutions. I thank you for attending our presentation today on selecting a line or load reactor. I'd like to introduce a couple people. Uh, joining us today will be Bob Ellis. Bob is our senior power quality engineer, and he'll be presenting this presentation in just a couple minutes. In, in addition, uh, Sonella Legata is our power quality product manager. And I'll also like to introduce two fine people, Dan Ellis and Eric Gersvig. Uh, there are power quality sales managers, and they help out throughout the country uh, with any power quality issues or sales opportunities. Uh, we all look forward to working with uh, everybody here in the future. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to turn this presentation over to Bob Ellis. Bob? Thank you, Mike. So the goal of, the, of this presentation is to go over the basics of selecting a, a line or load reactor for a variable frequency drive or VFD application. VFDs are used to control the speed of an AC motor by simulating different frequencies and frequency determines a motor speed. For the majority of VFD applications, it's easy to size and select a line reactor if you can determine a couple of parameters. This discussion will focus on basic applications involving standard AC induction motors for both variable and constant torque applications and should be adequate for the vast majority of applications you'll experience in the market. If there are any questions, don't hesitate to ask HPS about your application. So here are the main pieces of information required for reactor selection. In most cases, a reactor can provide a benefit. We will discuss some of those benefits later in the presentation. Uh, secondly, you need the voltage of the VFD or motor. Third, you need the current rating or horsepower of the motor. You also need the impedance, which is typically expressed as a percentage or per unit value. And lastly, you need to consider, is the reactor to be applied on the line or input side of the VFD? or the load or motor side of the VFD. Let's start with, will, it react, will the reactor provide a benefit? So as we discussed, line and load reactors, we'll refer to back to this diagram. This represents a typical VFD with line and load reactors, and then also shown in this, in this schematic are a classic three contactor bypass arrangement. The line and load reactors are not in the circuit for bypass operation since they are designed to address issues caused by the VFD and are not designed for the higher motor inrush that is typical with bypass operation when you start the motor across the line. Line reactors are found on the line or input of the VFD where it converts AC power to DC power. A line reactor will have the effect of reducing current harmonics from the VFD flowing back toward the power system. A line reactor will also have the effect of reducing voltage transients coming from the power system that could impact operation of the VFD. If line reactors are so good, why don't all VFDs have them? Well, some manu VFD manufacturers do have the line reactors as standard. If the user is not well versed in the effects of poor power quality, then they may not see the benefit of line reactors. If they can't see the cost benefit justification, then they will leave them out of their specification. So these are some situations where a line reactor can be beneficial. Firstly, the facility is violating harmonic limits set by the utility and punitive action may be threatened. Line reactors will provide some harmonic mitigation. Reactors may be the solution or may, they may be part of the solution. Reactors typically provide the least expensive method to reduce harmonics. If there are a lot of nonlinear loads like VFDs, then line reactors alone will not likely achieve IEEE 519 compliance. Further steps like active harmonic filtering or passive harmonic filters may be needed. Secondly, a facility is being designed for, to meet IEEE 519 standards. As in the first case, reactors may be the solution or be part of the solution. Third, 
a facility is being designed for meeting IEEE 519 compliance and active harmonic filters are going to be used. Active harmonic filters, like our HPS TrueWave product, work like noise canceling headphones. Instead of canceling audio waves with speakers, an active harmonic filter creates harmonics equal to but opposite those created by the VFDs. Active harmonic filters will benefit from each app VFD having a line reactor. Line reactors will reduce the rating of the active filter required. Fourth, if a customer expresses concerns about power quality, then their first consideration for minimal costs should be adding line reactors for their VFDs. Line reactors may not entirely address the issue, but they are a good place to consider starting. Lastly, VFDs can experience tripping events, which are sometimes the result of voltage spikes from the upstream power system. This will show up as line or DC bus over voltage faults. While line reactors are often associated with reducing current harmonics, another very important benefit is their ability to mitigate transient voltage disturbances. Vacuum breakers or vacuum contactors can cause large transient voltage spikes. Switching power factor correction capacitors can also cause voltage spikes, and so can lightning. A line reactor will help to limit the voltage spikes. Customers are often not concerned about power quality until they experience problems. If any of these problems are occurring within a facility, it may indicate excessive harmonics. Line reactors should be one of the first solutions considered, especially if VFDs present. VFDs represent a major portion of the plant load. So some of these uh, problems can include overheating of transformers and motors, interference with communication systems, failing of power factor correction capacitors, nuisance tripping of circuit breakers, and electronic component failure. Um, so here's some other reasons why you should consider a line reactor. Backup generators have to be sized to supply not only the motor load, but the additional harmonic currents. By reducing current harmonics, line reactors may reduce the load enough to allow sizing of a smaller and less expensive generator. If the nonlinear load exceeds 25% of the system load, line reactors should be considered. Next, if transformers are heavily loaded above 75% for extended periods, harmonics can cause dangerous heating. Line reactors should be used to reduce this heating. And lastly, since small VFDs do not usually have a DC link choke, it is worth considering using a line reactor on these small VFDs. It's common that a VFD may be powered by a transformer that is significantly higher in power rating. A large transformer appears as a low impedance source to the VFD, which can cause overheating of the internal DC capacitor bank. The larger the transformer, the lower the impedance will be relative to the size of the VFD. As a rule of thumb, use a line reactor. If the drive does not have a DC link choke, and the transformer supplying the drive is larger than 10 times the VFD's equivalent KVA rating. If the VFD does have a DC link choke, consider adding a line reactor if the transformer's KVA is greater than 20 times the VFD's equivalent KVA rating. So up to this point, we've been talking about the benefits of line reactors on the input of the, v of the VFD. So now we're going to discuss some of the benefits of load reactors between the VFD and the motor. The electrical output from a VFD is not a sine wave. It's a series of square waves of changing width. If there is an impedance mismatch between the cable and the motor, these square waves will result in reflected voltage wave. The amplitude of the reflection and the chances of this occurring are dependent on the rise time of the PDM, PWM wave, cable characteristics, cable length, and motor impedance. Reflective wave results in voltage transients, which can be double or triple the VFD 
the VFD is normal DC link voltage. The normal DC link, link voltage of a 40 volt system is 680 volts. So voltage peaks on the order of 1350 volts and up to 2000 volts are possible. These voltage transients can damage and eventually cause failure of the motor insulation. Often before a failure, as the pulses weaken the motor insulation, they can escape the motor windings and ground through the, the motor shaft, which causes bearing damage and failure. If we are talking about the reflective wave phenomenon, you need to consider the load reactor on the output of a VFD. And the need for a, a load reactor is really determined by the VFD manufacturer. The VFD manufacturers will typically have lead length charts to reference. Typically, it's a combination of carrier frequency or switching frequency and the lead length where the manufacturer will start to recommend an output reactor. To reduce audible noise and lower motor heating, use a 3% line reactor. If you're trying to mitigate reflective wave phenomenon, the drive manufacturer will typically recommend which technology to use. Reflective wave typically isn't possible for short cable distances of say 75 feet or less. Most manufacturers will list much higher distances before this becomes an issue. A 5% load reactor is recommended for distances up to 500 feet. The longer the cable, the higher the voltage transients from the reflective wave issue will be. While HPS recommends a 5% load reactor for lead lengths up to 500 feet, DVDT filters will start to be considered for lead lengths starting at around 300 feet and up to at least 1,000 feet. DVDT filters combine a load reactor with a filter often, often containing a, a capacitor and a, and a resistor components for improved performance over a line, re, a line reactor. Extremely long lead lengths over a thousand feet may require a product called a sine wave filter and or drive isolation transformers. With long lead lengths, you often require a drive isolation transformer to account for the resistive voltage drop of, of long lead lengths. Permanent magnet motors or PMMs are being used more widely. PMMs are more susceptible to higher temperature, which can demagnetize the magnets. As a result, they're more sensitive to the heating effects of the VFD's PWM output, which creates eddy currents in the stator and further elevates temperatures. As a minimum, PMMs should use DVDT filters regardless of lead length. All sine wave filters may need to be considered even for short lead lengths. Permanent magnet motor applications also tend to operate at higher frequencies, which may need special or derated filters to operate properly. It is always recommended to use an inverter duty rated motor with VFDs. There is considerable variation in non-inverter duty rated motors, so it can't be stated with certainty that a line reactor or DVDT filter will fully protect it. If a non-inverter duty rated motor is to be used, it is suggested that a DVDT filter be used on the output of a VFD. So a question, can voltage drop be an issue when using a load reactor or DVDT filter? When the motor cables are long, yes, voltage drop is a concern, and the installer should calculate the voltage drop due to the resistance in the cable. If the voltage drop is excessive, it will limit the ability of the motor to produce torque. An output drive isolation transformer may need to be used instead to boost the voltage since taps are available on the transformer. Drive isolation transformers must be custom designed to be used on the output of a VFD, especially if high torque is required at low speed, since the transformers are affected by frequency. Question, if I use an output load reactor or DVDT filter on a VFD, do I need to install VFD cable from the drive to the motor? 
Well, it's recommended that users install VFD cables between the VFD and the motor, especially on long lead links. A reactor can reduce the voltage stress on the cable, but it's better to use VFD rated cable in all cases. So that was that kind of gives all the reasons of how a reactor provides a benefit both on the, the input and the output side of a VFD. So now we're going to move on to some of the parameters you need to consider when you're sizing the, the line reactor or load reactor. So the first factor is voltage. The input reactor voltage is simple. What is the incoming line voltage? In North America, it's usually 600 volts, 480 volts, 240 volts, or 208 volts. HPS has sizing charts and software to select other common world voltages. The output voltage is often pretty much the same as the input voltage, except if there's an input line reactor, the output VFD voltage will be reduced by the percent of the reactor's impedance. For example, if a VFD is for, this has 40 volts AC on the input and uses a 5% line reactor, the output of, of, the, of the incoming line reactor will be 5% or 24 volts less at full load or 456 volts. If an input line reactor and an output load reactor are used, the voltage drop will be the sum of the impedances of the two, the two reactors, line and load. If the voltage drop is too high, a decision may need to be made to only use an input or an output reactor, or to limit one or both of the reactors to 3% impedance, even though 5% impedance may be preferred. Consult with HPS if the VFD's output frequency exceeds 60 Hertz. The impedance curve should be evaluated. To size a line reactor, we use current or horsepower. Properly sizing a line reactor is the most critical part of the selection process. Proper selection of a, of a line reactor current rating is very important. While line reactors have both a current and a horsepower rating, ultimately line reactors are current rated devices and horsepower is shown as a reference only. The current rating of an HPS line reactor should match the NEC motor current ratings for the horsepower and voltage combination. If the motor is rated in kilowatts, use its full load current rating for sizing. And note that 0 0.746 kilowatts equals one horsepower. Don't oversize line reactors. Oversizing means that the reactor will have a lower impedance, which will limit its ability to mitigate harmonics or, or to reduce voltage transients. A VFD often has a current kilowatt and horsepower rating. VFDs, like line reactors, are ultimately current rated devices. In this case, the, the drive is rated for a half horsepower at 40 volts AC and 1.4 amps, even though the NEC chart lists a typical current of only 1.1 amps for a half horsepower motor. To add to the confusion, some VFDs have different horsepower ratings if they're used for constant or variable torque ratings. When sizing a load reactor, you should use the, the nameplate current rating of the motor, or if necessary, you can use the, the VFD current rating. So here's an example where a 10 horsepower motor is being paired with a 10 horsepower VFD. Uh, the NEMA motor amperage is listed as 14 amps. The, the, this particular motor is, has a full load current of 13 amps. It does have a 1.15 service factor, so it could theoretically, theoretically see up to 15 amps. The Rockwell drive is rated for 17 amps. If we know the service factor will only be used for short periods of time, during, say, ramping, we would size a line reactor as close to 13 amps as possible, and not necessarily the 17 amps of the, that the VFD is rated for. As the VFD 
thermal overloads would typically be set for 13 amps. Using our selector software, char software or charts, this would call for a 14 amp rated reactor. If we had sized for the 17 amps of the VFD, we would have used a larger 21 amp reactor that would have only provided approximately 2% impedance at 13 amps, or we would have had to increase the impedance to a larger and more expensive 5% impedance unit. So we also need to consider the impedance. Here are some general rules of thumb to decide that a line reactor should be 3% impedance or 5% impedance. If a line reactor is being selected just for general input line buffering of harmonics or voltage spikes, 3% is often chosen. A 5% line reactor will achieve better harmonic reduction. Choosing between 3% or 5% impedance is really a trade-off between performance, cost, and size of the reactor. If an output line reactor or DVDT filter is being used as well, the system will have a potential voltage drop of the sum of, of both components. Since an output reactor is usually 5% and a DVDT filter closer to 3%, the input reactor may be limited to only 3% because of the, the total voltage drop. If the VFD doesn't have a DC link choke, which is typical for VFDs below 10 horsepower, a 5% line reactor is recommended. If the facility is experiencing power quality issues, a 5% line reactor is preferred. For output reactors between the VFD and motor, if the reactor is only being installed to lower audible noise and motor temperature, a 3% line reactor can be utilized. More typically, the reactor is being installed to protect for the reflected wave issue and a 5% line reactor should be used for lead links, typically up to around 500 feet. And there's some overlap with line reactors, with, with load reactors and DVDT filters. DVDT filters are generally used for lead lengths up to 1,000 feet. So let's, lastly, let's look at the, uh, whether we're, we're considering a line or a load reactor. Some manufacturers have different reactors which are used on the line or load side of the VFD and they can't be interchanged. HPS makes the selection of line or load reactors easy. The Centurion reactors can be used on both the line or the load side of the VFD without any derating. So we've been through all these, all these benefits of line and load reactors. We've, we've been through the, all the considerations to do with voltage, current, impedance, line or load side. So let's look at how we can put all this together and apply this knowledge in, in selecting a reactor. So Equals Light is an online configuration tool on the HPS website at americas.hammondpowersolutions.com. By clicking the drop-down menu for, for resources towards the right side of the page, you can come up with a selection for product configurator. Then you simply, simply fill in the frequency, the voltage, horsepower, kilowatts, or current, and select the impedance. The system will then size the best reactor for your application. Once sized, the system will also instantly provide 2D CAD drawings, 3D step files, nameplate information and dimensions, operating and maintenance manual, a brochure, and a list of frequently asked questions, including many questions that we discussed today. If you are a representative or distributor, you can also use our website to apply for the full version of eQuotes, which will in addition to the, the sizing, it will also provide pricing and stock levels. Access to the full equal system 
can also be requested by the resources tab at the top of the page. So thank you for attending HPS's reactor selection presentation. And I would now like to pass it back to Mike and open things up for questions. We do have one question. Was this pres presentation more geared to 460 or 600 volt applications? And the answer to that is it, it, it doesn't matter. Everything that we talked about today will, would be applied whether the system is 600 volts, 480 volts, 460, 240, 208. All the questions and all of the benefits and all of the solutions would be applicable regardless of the voltage. The only thing the voltage will change is the, is the selection of which particular line reactor would be best suited for the application to give the correct both enough amperage and to give the uh, and, and also provide the correct impedance. All right, I'm not seeing any questions. Uh, if you do have any questions in the future, we do have a great, wonderful staff of people here who are uh, looking forward to help you. Uh, Bob Ellis to get the presentation today. Uh, we've got Sonella Legata as the power quality, manor, uh, power quality manager. And again, two great resources in Dan. Oh, I see I got Dan Ellis. Dan Davis, I'm sorry, Dan, I got your name wrong. I think Dan is actually on here. Dan, if you'd like to introduce yourself since I screwed up and, and have your the wrong last name. I that's have all right. but I just Bob noticed. and I are very tight, so that's yeah. good. We, we almost feel like brothers. We almost feel like brothers. We're like brothers, man. I mean, we're interchangeable. But uh, I, yeah, uh, Dan Davis uh, reside out of Denver, Colorado, and handle uh, the West uh, for all power quality. And uh, my good friend Eric has all of the East for power quality uh, questions and uh, opportunities. All right, thank you, Dan Davis. I would. Uh, like to thank everybody so much for coming to our presentation. We uh, greatly appreciate your time. Hopefully you found this uh, interesting and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you everybody.